Hey, hey, you think this is cute? You think this is cuddly? Don't believe their lies. Look at this. Look at what they did. Cuba's right. And I say kill them all. Yeah. Vermintide 2 is a co-op melee action game by the developer Fat Shark. You and three other survivors need to make it through dangerous environments, all while fighting back against Rat Men, Fat Men, Goat Men, and other assorted Discord moderators. <laughs> It's inspired by the Left 4 Dead series and is a worthy successor to the genre, but sets itself apart with its unique style. There are different ways to play, too, with multiple linear campaigns, as well as a roguelike mode that shakes things up entirely. It takes place in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. If you're unfamiliar, think Lord of the Rings, but significantly bloodier and with much larger hats. Play as one of five classic fantasy character types. The strong and reliable human soldier, the hardy and jolly dwarf, the swift, agile elf, the racist, and magic meth head grandma. Each character has a variety of weapons and classes with different abilities to try out. You'll learn that there are many different ways to skin a rat, and all of them are satisfying. The characters are memorable, and their dialogue stands out in a good way. They have grounded and consistent personalities that clash with one another in banter that keeps you immersed in their story. Throw these characters into an intense setting with furries and furry enablers pouring out the fucking walls and you got a good action game. Ammo is limited, and melee combat is encouraged. Learning the dodges and strikes of Vermintide is like learning a dance, and if you perform your combat macarena for your Warhammer deity well, they will bless you with strength in battle. Fat Shark did a great job designing Vermintide. It has its moments of, uh, fart shark quality. Only hurts when I laugh, <laughs> and when I breathe. That's a lot of blood, Azungi! For me, though, even with some bugs, it's still a fantastic game. I love Vermintide, too. You should play it, and I want to tell you why. This is a Warhammer game, and just like every other Warhammer property, it has about five more books than necessary dedicated to its backstory. It's all actually interesting, if you're a shut-in like me, and compelling for understanding the dire situation the characters are in. But I am well aware that some people like to take showers, touch grass, have sex, etc, etc. So, I will condense this down into a couple paragraphs for your convenience. Buckle up and let me give you a quick rundown of the lore. This game takes place in the foretold end times of the known world, as in the actual accepted by canon apocalypse is happening. Rat men, thought to be a myth, are flooding the streets and storming cities in hours. North men, thought to be content with their pestilent and violent way of life, have joined forces with the rat men to pillage and kill. And beast men, thought to be trapped within the confines of their local furry convention, are breaking down the hotel doors that kept them in. The Rat Men are a race known as the Skaven. They are conniving, murderous bastards and want nothing more than for you to think otherwise. Most humans were oblivious to them. Rats aren't a problem, they're cute, they're adorable. Look, this one's even got a VTuber. No, do not believe their lies. Had humanity not fallen for this propaganda, they would have been more prepared when those VTubers started coming out of the ground to kill us. For the entirety of their existence up until this point, the Skaven lived underground. They were organized into clans, and they were so preoccupied with murdering each other and each other's clans that they forgot to consider teaming up against the surface dwellers. Then a big rat with horns showed up and said, Guys, what if we team up against the surface dwellers? Then all the clans went, oh yeah, and then they teamed up to kill all the surface dwellers. Vermintide 1 features the Skaven as the sole enemy. Vermintide 2 enters the Rotbloods, also known as the Forces of Chaos. These worshippers of the Chaos God Nurgle have joined forces with the Skaven to kick your ass, forming an alliance called the Pact Sworn. If you have a certain DLC, there are also Beastmen, who are Chaos-mutated humanoids. They are not relevant to the main plot, but they will respond with violence when greeted, as most furries are prone to do. Now for our team of heroes. Vermintide 1 follows five unlikely allies all caught in the same city of Ubersreich when shit goes down. Saltspire, the witch hunter, arrested Sienna, the pyromancer. They're called bright wizards, but whatever. And hired Marcus Kruber as a bodyguard. They were gonna bring her to trial. Carillion the Elf and Barden the Dwarf were both exiled from their homes for reasons they haven't had enough therapy to talk about yet, and somehow ended up in Ubersreich. All five seek shelter for the night at the local inn and meet with innkeep Franz Lohner. He gives you your missions in the game. Anyway, rats start pouring through the fucking walls and killing people and eating babies and <clears throat> Anyways, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Now, in Vermintide 2, you'll be adventuring through ruined empire cities, mystical elven lands, and rotblood camps without a shower in sight. 
All to make sure you can stop their ultimate plan, the Skittergate, a portal to let their forces move huge numbers to key locations. Take this magic rat nonsense out and you'll make the Paxworn's lives a lot harder. You accomplish this by playing as one of the five characters I touched on earlier. Starting with Marcus Kruber. He is the everyman. A mercenary, a farmer, a sexy bastard, and a soldier. One look at his beard is all it takes to understand why they use his face on the promo artwork. He's confident, level-headed, has a sense of humor, and is the subject of every Vermintide fanfic involving Carillion. Kruber best boy, by the way. Barden is a dwarf of many talents. He sings, he mines for ore, uses a minigun. No, wait, that, that's the other one. Karelia. This is a co-op game, and as Karelian is the hot girl of the group, some may be quick to label her the stereotypical role of heal slut. And they would be right, because two of her class options provide increased healing for the entire team. They're also wrong, though, because Karelian is an elf. The healing she gives is simply to offset the natural elven tendency to steal healing supplies from you and shoot you in the back of the head when you're not looking. Saltspire is a witch hunter, and works for the CEO of racism. Witch hunters don't care much for witches, or wizards, or skaven, or greenskins, or elves, or pagans, or each other, and they barely tolerate dwarves and other humans. Saltspire is actually among the most tolerant of the witch hunters, though. He's open to working with other races and religions, so long as he gets the job done. A fact his superiors at Racism Incorporated do not care for. One day in Florida, when Sienna was but a little girl, she was seen playing with matches and lighting alligators on fire for fun. The person who saw this decided, you know what would be a great job for this little psychopath? A fire wizard! And started training her down that life path with the knowledge that nothing could possibly go wrong. Each character is quite flexible when it comes to the role you want them to play in the team. Everyone gets usually one melee and one ranged weapon they can equip. Without including DLC, they have three classes each with different passives and active abilities. If you want to play a tanky, melee-focused character, just about every one of the five has a way that you can do something like that. If you want to focus on big range damage to shred through bosses, you can do that too. To help you understand the classes without going into every single one, you can put each of them into roughly four categories. First, Ranged Focus Babby. Stronger at a distance. Has a melee weapon, but usually forgets how to use it because they're too eager to shoot anything that moves, including their allies. Maybe you have more arrows, a powerful ranged special ability, or can go invisible to land easy headshots. Speedrunner Bait. Their special ability lunges or dashes them forward, and it has a short cooldown. You'll commonly find wannabe speedrunners in quick play using these classes to jump far ahead of the team, only to get pinned by an enemy, all on their own, and loudly complain about it when they die. Very similar to watching someone pass you at 100 miles per hour on the highway, only to see them flipped over in the ditch five minutes later. These are not inherently bad, by the way. The mobility is a powerful tool. Just remember to stick with your team. Screaming constantly. Well-rounded melee and ranged ability with the special active to yell really loud. <laughs> Consider your active ability a panic button that will push enemies away from you in an AoE. Depending on the character, this yell may heal your team, hurt enemies, or give you more critical hit chance. Or if you're the dwarf, it taunts all enemies into attacking you specifically. 40 IQ Barbarian. You're too stupid to throw a baseball in a straight line anymore, but autism be damned, you can work a grill. These classes have no ranged weapons, and instead have extremely powerful melee abilities. This includes two DLC classes for Marcus and Saltspire, the Grail Knight and Warrior Priest, respectively. Fat Shark broke this archetype a little bit by giving Bardens 40 IQ Barbarian throwing axes, but they're really fun to use, so I forgive them. Overall, Vermintide has a very well-developed cast to pick from. Time to talk about the actual gameplay. Left 4 Dead players will be familiar with the concept of an AI director. Vermintide uses one as well. This director is what determines what enemies or items spawn and where they do it, keeping multiple playthroughs fresh. The enemies spawn include many special enemies. These special enemies are the fancy-looking rats and rotbloods that make a lot of noise and whisper sweet nothings in your ear before trying to eat your organs. These special enemies play a large role in the game, and they're often called disablers. They can incapacitate you on their own, no matter how much health you have. And if you get caught, you have to have a friend help you out. 
You can't break out of it solo. You can thank the AI director for every single special enemy that comes to try to kill you. But please do not bully him, he is trying his best. The melee combat in this game is fun. Really fun. You could play this game on a fight stick for all the options you have. The combat in this game is like a dance. Dodging, blocking, and pushing your enemies around is crucial for not taking damage, especially at harder difficulties where the damage you take is much higher. It's very similar to real life dancing. You dodge, you duck, you weave, you slap them around when they're not looking, and when you see an opening, you go for the kill. And also, if somebody tries to slap your ass from behind, there's a little warning noise that plays that gives you a moment to turn around and deal with the threat. There's a plethora of weapons to choose from. Daggers that are faster, but weaker. Axes that are slower, but stronger. Armor-piercing hammers, good at killing one big target, and wide-sweeping swords, good at mowing down many weak enemies at once. Some weapons have shields, which gives you a lot more stamina to block with. Others are dual-wielded, which usually have less stamina, but a lot of attack power. Above all, just just remember that no matter what you pick, your favorite will be lambasted by some dipshit on quick play. So just pick whatever you want. Ranged weapons in this game aren't typically the main weapon, especially at higher difficulties because they include friendly fire. Ammo is limited and has to be scavenged for, so guns and bows are meant for picking off special enemies. Hordes get the swords, but you stay strapped for when you spot some bullshit in the distance that you don't want coming any closer. The exception for this is Sienna, who uses fire magic. All of her magic staves have infinite ammo, but if you spray them too much, they'll overheat. And then Sienna will overheat and fucking explode and die. I'm about to bust. I'm gonna bust. I busted. I busted. Blow up. <laughs> the number one rule to remember for the gameplay, though, is that everything is best done as a group. Or at the very least, with an eye shot of each other. Revive each other, heal each other, see who needs ammo or assistance. But if somebody goes down, also be aware if the situation is too dire to help. Your teammate can always respawn somewhere ahead of you if you keep it together. Then you can go rescue and revive them. I cannot emphasize enough, you must stick together to survive. If you run out by yourself into the dark alleyways, into the sketchy unknown behind the local Denny's, you're liable to get sucked off by a fat guy wearing a hood. And there's no escaping once he's got your pants down, unless one of your friends is there to push him off. Sticking together is crucial. There are many different ways to enjoy Vermintide. There's multiple campaigns with many individual levels, and because of the AI director, they're never the exact same experience twice. There's also the Chaos Wastes, which is a roguelike mode that has randomized levels and unique buffs that you can buy along the way. It's a totally different experience to the campaign and worth trying out, especially considering it's free. The default normal difficulty will be a fun challenge for most people who are new to Vermintide. You can walk forward and enjoy clicking rats with friends without too much hassle while exploring the levels and enjoying yourself. But if you're shower averse like I am, you'll enjoy learning the metagame for playing on harder difficulties. On hard game modes, all range damage has friendly fire, so positioning becomes way more important. Everyone is way more careful with bombs because of this too. Or should be, hypothetically. Legend difficulty is the hardest game mode you can play on without DLC. It's the common mode to queue up for in quick play. Legend is where you go when you've mastered the dance of stepping around and smacking rats on the ass without getting hit, or without getting sued for sexual harassment. Intense fights that can result in going down with just one mistake. People wanting to show off how they can repeatedly dodge a boss attack, or how quickly they can snipe a life leech the moment it spawns. Or my personal favorite, the professional tryhard who desperately wants top kills on the team, and then leaves the game halfway through after getting down one singular time. After mastering the mechanics of the game, many people focus on grabbing books in the campaign along the way. You get a loot chest after completion of a level, and these books increase the quality of that loot. These tomes and grimoires replace your item slots, so they're an optional difficulty increase the team can choose. Tomes are wholesome hand-holding childhood friend content. Grimoires are skaven propaganda of blacklisted tags on Enhentai, and should be discarded off of the nearest cliff when found. Many Legend Quick Play matches consider these books mandatory to pick up, but I never learned how to read, and I'm not going to force you to do it either if you join my game. There's one difficulty higher than Legendary called Cataclysm, but you need a DLC with mixed reviews to play it. Death is assumed on this game mode, assuming you can also find three other people who have the DLC. Cataclysm is the only time where your choice of class or weapon really matters, because not min-maxing here means you will instead get your holes min-maxed by massive goat dick. Ha <laughs> ha
Oh no. <laughs> My game is getting progressively more widescreen. <laughs> I am very glowy right now. Oh my god, I went from one to the other, no! I had no chance! Looks like we're heading downwards! I fear I must be more flexible. <laughs> I don't know how we both managed to do that so synchronized. Vermintide 2 has everything a good co-op action game needs. Rock-solid combat with many ways to approach how you kill. Unique settings and lore that sets the environment apart from other games. And memorable, entertaining characters that interact in those environments. It's one of my favorite go-to games I play with friends, and if Fat Shark's new game, Dark Tide, is gonna be anything like it, then I'm looking forward to it. Despite the occasional bug, they killed it with Vermintide 2, and I want to see more successes out of them. I give this game three Bardens equaling one Kruber Tall, and if you made it this far in the video, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.